Hello, and welcome back to Medicare for All Mondays. I'm your host, Hadi Rahim. This is the show where we progressives push back against criticism of our flagship proposal, a universal single-payer health care system for the United States, Medicare for All. Medicare for All is the name of the proposed single-payer universal health care system that progressives want to implement in the United States. It would take the existing Medicare program, expand it to all people regardless of age, and eliminate cost sharing, which means making most services free, just like almost every other developed country in the world. It's more efficient, it's less costly, and it's just overall better. This week's healthcare fallacy is a very common one, and when it's said, most people just accept the logic of it at face value. But if you actually break down this argument, you'll realize it makes no sense whatsoever. It's the argument that America, unlike Britain, France, Germany, Denmark, Canada, Australia, etc., can't provide free health care to all of its citizens because we have way more people in these countries. The first one is the United States size. So mm -hmm. we're talking 300 million, I think, is the population. Three, here. three, twenty-five, fifty. Yeah. I mean, it's a huge number. So yeah. there is that the, the size of the country um, simply does not make it a good candidate for a fully publicly funded or tax funded system okay. um, for a number of reasons, bureaucracy being sort of the, the big one. Nine million people of Sweden, a tiny group compared to the U.S. population of 300 million. A much more diverse demographic than, yeah. say, people who are about all the same height, size in a place like Norway with the population yeah. of Rhode Island. This argument may make sense at first because, yeah, a higher population means you need more spending. But it also means more tax revenue is collected to fund that spending. Systems scale, you know. Yes, a lot of countries that provide free healthcare to their citizens only have a few million people. But there are plenty of larger countries that do as well, like France, the UK, and Germany. Japan provides free healthcare, and they're consistently ranked as one of the healthiest countries in the world. And they have 120 million people. You might say, well, oh hottie, 120 million is still a lot less than our 330 million. And okay, sure, but do you really think there's an upper limit? And if so, what is it? How many people would Japan need to have for their healthcare system to suddenly stop functioning? 150 million? 200 million? 250 million? 300 million? Nobody who has ever made this argument has ever been able to explain what the upper limit is. This argument is often tied with the point that the US is also just way too geographically large to run a universal healthcare system, and that universal healthcare can only work in tiny little microscopic countries like Canada. Look, I don't really think that geographic size is much of a hurdle in the age of the internet and mass communication. I mean, Medicare already exists. It's operated by the federal government in all 50 states, and it takes care of over 60 million seniors. We don't live in the 1790s anymore. Our government is perfectly capable of paying doctors in Honolulu from Washington, D.C. Now, a lot of progressives have been willing to compromise on this issue, and they're saying that they're okay with a Medicare for All type system being run by each of the individual 50 states. US states basically have the same population of many European countries, so the idea is that the plan would be more feasible if you let each state run its own universal system. This is definitely possible, and I still think it would work better than our current system, but I'm generally skeptical of this sort of thing. Letting states have autonomy over certain issues can be beneficial, but oftentimes it just leads to more inequality, especially when it comes to social programs. More conservative states will just underfund their programs. We've seen this with Medicaid, a healthcare program for poor people that a lot of people often confuse with Medicare. The system is funded at both the federal and state levels, but states are given broad discretion as to determining eligibility and benefits. States that adequately fund Medicaid have a higher life expectancy than states that don't. A patchwork state-by-state -state system would just drive inequality between states. We've seen this in Canada. Their Medicare program is funded and operated primarily at the provincial level, with the federal government only paying for a portion of the care. Because of this, your healthcare experience can differ depending on whether you live in British Columbia or Quebec. You might have heard that Canada has some of the longest wait times in the Western world. Well, that's only true as an average. Wait times vary wildly by province and by how much each province decides to spend. The Canadians are too cheap about it. They just don't spend enough on healthcare to have a lively system. Some provinces, like Saskatchewan, where this started, have shorter waiting times for both acute and elective treatment than most of the United States. So 
There are parts of Canada where it works. A federal system would put everyone in the same boat. Could this work? Absolutely. Again, Medicare already exists at the federal level and it tends to be more efficient than most insurance companies and pays lower prices for the same procedures. So are population and size really a problem? No. No, they're not. There are cases where it does matter, but this isn't one of them. Stop making excuses. This system is totally possible. Medicare already exists, and it's incredibly popular. Expand it, improve it, and fund it properly.